Mike Dell's World number 268 for the 8th of November 2017. And this is Nipod Pomo number 8. I'm staying on track this year. I love it. <laughs> anyway, today I wanted to talk about a buddy of mine uh, here in the local Traverse City area. Uh, Steve's his name, uh, better known as Omelette on the radio. And for years and years and years, I think exactly 10, he was the uh, morning host on WKLT in uh, Traverse City. And uh, he had a partner there for a little while at the beginning. And then uh, he brought on uh, Rick Coates as his news guy somewhere in year two. And, uh, you know, had a pretty successful show over there. And uh, KLT decided in their... uh, in their uh, bid to get rid of the radio station, I think. I don't know. I, you know not, I'm not getting into that part of it. But they decided that uh, they needed to change up the contracts. And uh, anyway, Steve left WKLT and uh, spent a year podcasting. And uh, you can still see the results of that over at OmeletRadio.com. Uh, just spell it out, OmeletRadio.com. And uh, I think all the podcasts are still over there. I helped Steve uh, get it uh, set up with his home studio and uh, and uh, helped him uh, get the podcast website up and running and the RSS feed and all that happy stuff. And, and uh, that's still over there for pres- posterity. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, I don't know, long about uh, August, uh, he started mentioning Camp Omelet, and he started having Rick on with him. And I kind of figured something was going on. He didn't tell me either, but uh, that's okay. He had to keep it real secret. Uh, but uh, he, uh, right about the one-year mark of being off of KLT, he came on as the morning host of the uh, Bear, uh, which is 98.1 and uh, some other frequency up in Sheboygan. It's a dual FM. Uh, and, uh, you know, collectively known as The Bear. And uh, they built him a studio down here in Traverse City at their office here. And and uh, it's all uh, it's all great. And uh, now you can listen to Omelette and Coats in the morning, 5.30 in the morning till uh, 10 in the morning. And then after that, oh, NASCAR Steve, who also used to be at KLT, uh, takes over from the Sheboygan studio. So it's... It's good to to have live local radio again in the morning here. Uh, you know, Steve and uh, or Omelette and Coats, as the show is called, uh, took over for Bob and Tom here in the local market. Of course, uh, those of you that uh, follow anything to do with radio morning shows know that Bob and Tom started in Harbor Springs, Petoskey area on a, on another radio station. I think WJML, if I remember correctly, sometime in the early 80s, I believe it was, and uh, then they uh, went to WFBQ in uh, Indianapolis and then got syndicated, and here a couple of years ago, uh, Bob Kavoyan, uh, the Bob of Bob and Tom, retired, and uh, good for him. He uh, got out while he still had uh, his health, and uh, him and his wife now are are podcasting, actually. uh, I forget what the name of their show is, but... uh, they're uh, not full time, but uh, they're uh, very avid RVers, uh, especially the airstreams. So, uh, yeah, they travel around in their airstream and uh, and talk about it. Uh, Bob and Becky, I, just like I said, can't remember the name of the podcast right off top of the he- top of my head. But uh, Bob and Tom's show is still going apparently uh, with uh, just Tom. And, uh, of course, Chick McGee and uh, Christy Lee, uh, or Teresa, as she's as her real name is. But anyway, uh, so anyway, uh, St- Steve and, uh, and uh, Rick took over on 98.1 The Bear. Uh, of course, I got to go over, be one of their first guests. Not their first guests, but in the first couple of weeks there, uh, talking about International Podcast Day on uh, September 30th. So that was uh, that was cool. Got to go uh, do that, and uh, I'm sure I'll be over there periodically, and uh, maybe even fill in for Rick some on the news. That might be fun. But 
you know, I did that before on uh, KLT. So uh, we'll see if that uh, materializes. But I just wanted to congratulate Steve. Uh, his show seems to be doing really well. Uh, they don't, they're not having any lack of advertisers. So I think their ratings must be pretty good. And and uh, I think uh, I think it's a good move for uh, the local radio station. We're we're lucky up here in uh, Traverse City that uh, we don't have a lot of the big conglomerate radio stations, you know, like uh, Clear Channel slash iHeart Media uh, stations or uh, you know, whatever the other big radio groups are. We don't have that. We've got a, a you know fairly large couple of radio groups up here, but uh, they're local. You know, they're uh, like Midwest Broadcasting uh you know, has the uh, country station, a talk station, sports station, uh, and a couple other station oldies. You know, that's kind of a group. And then uh, there's McDonald Broadcasting that has several uh, radio stations throughout the uh, the area. You know, this area is a little different than a lot because it's a big uh, metro, as they call it, or a big uh, broadcasting area you know that uh, like so most of the tv stations here are are dual stations or even more uh like our uh, nbc affiliate is seven and four because they had to have two transmitters even back in the analog day to cover the uh, market you know they had one up in sheboygan michigan one in uh, traverse city michigan or well, actually harrietta south of traverse city and uh, our uh, CBS affiliate has a, a transmitter in Cadillac, Michigan, and another one near Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, up in the UP. And 29 and 8 uh, had one uh, in Kalkaska and one in uh, the Sioux. And, uh, you know, th- th- so there's 29 and 8, 7 and 4, 9 and 10, and Fox 33, which uh, actually had four or five transmitters, uh, all on UHF, and they still do. And a lot of them have grouped up. But uh, same thing with the radio stations. WKLT had uh, uh, one transmitter on Boyne Mountain and another one on Radio Hill here in Traverse City. And uh, the Bear has uh, one you know, west of Traverse City and one uh, up in Sheboygan. And, you know, just like I said, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of dual, you know, simulcasted FM stations to cover the market. So... Uh, and, and like I said, there's no big uh, national radio group up here. Uh, I can't think of any stations in the area that are owned by anybody other than a local group, or at least a uh, group that has local stations. Now, there are some, I think there's a, a one group of stations that also has stations in uh, Missouri and Texas, I think. But uh, for the most part, it's all locally owned uh, the uh, TV stations here, uh, one of them's owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. So that's one of the big broadcasters. But, you know, they leave the uh, local decisions up to the local managers. And, you know, it's a very local feeling TV station. So it's not a big deal. That, that's the one I happen to work for, uh, 7 and 4, WPBN, WTOM. Uh, WTOM stands for Top of Michigan. And PBN is the Paul Bunyan Network. <laughs> anyway, enough about broadcast geekery. Just wanted to uh, tell you about Omelette and Coats. Uh, if you want an interesting live local radio show from Northwest Michigan, uh, go ahead and tune into the Bear 98.1, and uh, I forget what the other frequency is, but uh, you can find them online in uh, Tune In Radio and also uh, from their website, uh, ClassicRockTheBear.com. So, anyway. That's my update for November 8th for Napod Pomo. This is Mike, and uh, you can catch me tomorrow.